it's time for some more football. We got two Sunday games to talk about. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and we got some more football to talk about, baby. That's right. We got two games on Sunday. If you're looking for the preview, analysis, best bets for the Saturday games, that video is out now, so check that one out. Um, it's kind of bittersweet when a season is coming to an end. That's what the NFL is. We do not have many more games to talk about, uh, but that also means more time on NBA. Hopefully start up the golf uh, weekly videos, and MLB is not too far away. That's right. The grind of every sport is no joke, that's for sure. But I can't believe that we may hit 20,000 subscribers by the time this NFL season and playoffs are over. It's just absolutely bonkers. Cannot thank you guys enough. But uh, in this video, of course, we're going to start it out with the trends. We do not need to go over the bets recap. We already did that in the video for Saturday games. Uh, five and two in the wild card round. So hopefully we can have another good round of uh, playoff betting. And then we're going to preview and give out our best bets for the Bucks and Lions. And then preview and best bets for the final game. The Chiefs at the Bills. Maybe the game of the weekend. And of course, we'll wrap it up with the bets recap. So hit that like button, leave a comment below, subscribe if you are new to the channel to join this incredible community that we have here. Um, I'm ready to get started and it starts with the trends. All right, if you are new to the channel, we do NFL trends every single week and they have been very profitable. If you just tailed them blindly, I always recommend to just have this be part of your handicap, not be the only reason you make a bet, of course. But Lions have held only one of their 10 opponents under 20 points. Uh, in their last 10 opponents, I mean. And the Bucks have gone over their team total in six of nine road games. Team total is 20 and a half. I think 21 and a half on some books. Uh, Bucks, eight and one against the spread on the road this season. That is absolutely incredible. Underdogs in seven of those eight also. So uh, Baker Mayfield, three and oh ATS in the playoffs with seven TDs and one pick. Small sample size. Doesn't probably mean that much, but I just threw it in there. Uh, Chiefs games have gone under the second half total in 16 of 18 games this season. And the total in this game is 22 and a half, 16 of 18, guys. If you're just blindly tailing that, that is very, very profitable. Um, they just come out and don't score and don't let the other team score very much. Uh, Chiefs, 15, 4, and 1 ATS the last 20 games as an underdog. Weird to see the Chiefs as an underdog, but here we are. Mahomes, 8, 1, and 1 ATS in his career as an underdog. That's wild. That means he's only played 10 games as an underdog. Uh, also, a little note for that. This will be Mahomes' first road playoff game if you don't count playing in Tampa for the Super Bowl against the Bucs. That is pretty much a road game, but officially his first road playoff game, which is also just unbelievable. And then Josh Allen, 26-1 and one against the spread versus teams allowing less than 20 points per game. That is the weirdest trend we've had in a while. Um, that's pretty much saying anytime he plays good defenses, they find ways to win and cover the spread, 26-1. and one. So, those are the trends for the Sunday games, and now let's get right into it. And it starts with the Bucks and Lions. All right, the first game on Sunday takes us out to Detroit, Michigan. We got the Lions hosting the Tampa Bay Bucks. Who didn't have this matchup at the beginning of the year? Uh, Lions minus six and a half total, forty nine and a half on this game. Uh, let's just talk about it a little bit before we get into our bets. Uh, Lions trying to make their first NFC Championship game since nineteen ninety one. Absolutely wild. Um, that's when they lost to the Redskins. I can say that. That's what team name they were back then, okay? So don't give me crap. Uh, those are the Barry Sanders days. I was five years old. Um, I also, by the way, grew up as a huge Eminem fan. So seeing him in the crowd and getting him pumped up and all that for Detroit, that was that was pretty cool to see. But anyway, side note. Uh, Bucks are trying to get back to uh, the NFC Championship after making it there not long ago in 2020 because they won the Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Um, it's just kind of wild to me to think that we are guaranteed to have either the Lions or the Buccaneers in the NFC Championship game. That's crazy. Uh, we have a battle of two quarterbacks that were kind of just tossed to the side, to be honest with you, and Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff. Rams gave up on Goff. A few teams gave up on Baker Mayfield, and here they are. Uh, Bucks 7-0 against the Spreads, road underdog. I know we went over these stats already. Um, Lions only scored three points in the second half last week. Just keep that in mind. They did struggle. Uh, Rams defense made some adjustments. And the Lions didn't do much. I think they had just over 100 total yards. Um, maybe, I think, in the whole second half or last four or five drives or something. It just wasn't pretty. So um, that game really slowed down in the scoring, that's for sure. But anyways, those are just some news and notes. Um, in this game, I got a player prop for one unit and then an anytime touchdown for a half unit. If I had to lean aside, 
I'm probably going Bucks plus six and a half, to be honest with you. I just love how their defense is playing. I think they can keep it somewhat close. I'm not going to say a letdown spot because it's a huge game for Detroit. It's not like they're not going to get up for it. But that win last week, that was pretty huge for the whole community of Detroit and the team and everything. So, um, But you know what? I can see the Lions running them out of the town, too. So that's why I don't have a bet on this spread. But my player prop, my best bet in this game, give me Baker Mayfield over 255 and a half passing yards at minus 115 on DraftKings. Now, Mayfield the Dreams, he's been just absolutely slinging it, guys. I am just shocked. I didn't think this guy was very good at all. Uh, but he's actually gone over this line now in four of the last five games. And in those four games, he's thrown for 283 or more yards. That's how much he's gone over. And now he's facing a Lions defense that, let's face it, they have been struggling versus the pass this season. 27th in pass yards allowed at 247.4. Uh, Baker's pass attempts number on the sports books right now is set at 35 and a half. So he's, he's predicted to throw it a lot, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does either. Um, so I, I lean over in that one, but it is a high number. They also have a guy named Mike Evans. I don't know if you know about him, but he's kind of good. Him and Chris Godwin, they could have a really good game versus this weak Lions secondary. Um, and my boy Kate Otten had a heck of a game last week. Eight catches. That's right. I say my boy because he went to the same high school as me and Ryan. But uh, So that was pretty cool to see him have a good game. Kind of an outlier. He doesn't usually have eight catches. But um, anyways, they got weapons. Game script obviously should dictate some passing. Um, Bucks playing from behind is kind of what you think might happen, or if anything, it's at least going to be a close game. If the Lions play really well offensively, then they will have to catch up, and uh, that only helps this, obviously. Now let's talk some worries about this bet, because I like to give you both sides. Um, obviously, the Bucks get out to an early lead and control this game on the ground somehow, then that's going to be an issue. If the Bucks can't protect at all for Baker Mayfield, it might be an issue. And by the way, Aiden Hutchinson leads the NFL over the last three weeks with seven sacks and 23 pressures. So that's pretty impressive. But last week, Mayfield got sacked four times. Bucks crushed the Eagles. And what did Mayfield still do in a blowout game? Uh, he threw for 337 yards against the Eagles. So, I mean, just because it is a blowout doesn't mean it's, you know, he's not going to get there because the blowout might happen because of him. But also, when you're facing the Lions, this Lions run defense is a strength on that side of the ball. Top three run defense this year, giving up 88.8 yards per game on the ground. Um, if the Bucks want to consistently move the ball, it will more than likely have to be through the air. Um, I just love the matchup. I like the possible game script and in a close one or the Bucks from behind. Um, and also playing in a dome in January. You got to love that when you have an overprop for quarterback and they're playing nice, cozy dome. So give me Baker's dozen over 255 and a half yards as bet number one. And my second bet in this game, it is a half unit, it is an anytime touchdown. Give me Sam Laporta anytime TD at plus 140 on FanDuel. That's right. FanDuel has good odds on this one. Um, again, I'm putting a half unit on it, but this guy has scored at least one touchdown in four straight home games. I mean, that's pretty good. How about five touchdowns in the last five games? Also, I will say, though, in the five touchdowns in the last five games, one game he had three. So take that for what it is. That means he's had at least one or more touchdowns in three of the last five games. He was targeted 11 times versus the Buccaneers in their first meeting for whatever that's worth. Um, obviously, he's not 100% healthy, but you know what? He scored a touchdown last week. You, you hope, and he's limited in practice, that he is still okay. Bucks have given up the sixth most touchdowns to tight ends this year with seven. Um, and they've actually given up five touchdowns to tight ends in their last six games. So I think this is great value at plus 140. Anything plus money, really, I like this bet. Um, he's a huge red zone target for the Lions, as you guys know. Good matchup. Uh, give me Sam Laporta at any time touchdown at plus 140 as my second best bet of this game. And let's move on to talk a little Chiefs and Bills. The final game takes us out to Buffalo. We got the Bills hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Bills minus two and a half, over under 45 and a half. We got another Mahomes Allen showdown. Uh, maybe the best rivalry in sports or in football right now, not in sports. Sorry. Um, Bills beat the Chiefs earlier this year in Kansas City. And the Bills this year are right now are just on absolute fire. We didn't even know if they're going to make the playoffs. And then they just won seven of their last eight games. Matchup's going to be a look. It's going to look a lot different. We're going to go into that, but man, these are not two high-powered offenses anymore. That's not going to be a 45-41 type of game. At least I don't believe so. That would shock me. Um, but I'm going to get right into my best bet. It's a two-leg parlay, a little bit random, but I like it. So give me James Cook 50 plus yards and the under 51 and a half in this game. You put those together, it's minus 110 on DraftKings. 
Yes, the under 51 and a half is an alt line. Yes, James Cook 50 plus yards is an alt line. So let's talk about Mr. Cook. Let's have a Sunday cookout, huh? Right here, 50 plus yards. His original line is at 60 and a half yards. So I'm taking it down about 10, 11 yards. Uh, if you haven't been following the Bills, they have become a heavy running team. That's right. It's crazy to think about. Uh, but Josh Allen does not need to throw the ball 50 to 60 times anymore. Uh, they changed the offensive coordinators, which was absolutely huge for them. So since they changed coordinators, he is averaging just under 17 carries per game. I also like his over 14 and a half rush attempts as a possible play. Um, you know, I was hoping it was 13 and a half, and I'd really like it, but uh, I still, I still do lean over 14 and a half. The way to win for Buffalo right now, and they've shown it in seven of the last eight games, is to establish the run. That's just what they have to do. It's what they have been doing, and the weakness of this Chiefs defense, if there is one, is run defense. They are 23rd in opponent yards per carry. And then the last game before the coordinator change, Cooked averaged 5.8 yards per carry. That's what they did. That's what he did. So, um, I mean, seriously, guys, James Cook, it doesn't need that many carries, I don't believe, to get there. Cook averages 4.7 yards per carry this season. If he gets 15 carries, he would only need 3.3 yards per carry to get hit 50 yards. That's it. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all facing this Chiefs run defense. And uh, the weather is going to dictate that, too. Apparently, there is a ton of snow coming into Buffalo. I think right now it should slow down before Sunday, but getting players into the stadium and all that, I'm sure they'll have another fun uh, fan shoveling uh, job all day long, all weekend long. But either way, it's going to be freaking cold. And uh, I think they're going to run the ball quite a bit. I think he goes over 14 and a half, which means he should easily hit 50 yards. I think he goes over 60 and a half, to be honest with you. So I just need 50 out of Cook, and that is the first leg. Second leg, under 50, uh, yeah, under 51 and a half. Man, if only I could talk. The total is 45 and a half. I'm taking all the way up to 51 and a half. 51 is the key number. Obviously, you can have a game like 27, 24, 51, still under. Um, but I, I think this game goes under 45 and a half, to be honest with you. These are not the same type of teams like we talked about. We got the Chiefs, which we all know the defense is the strength of this team. It's mind-boggling. It's crazy. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, the defense is the strength. Um, they've really just struggled the last couple months putting up points. They kind of just rely on Isaiah Pacheco. They just lack weapons. We all know that. Lack weapons. Travis Kelsey looks like he's lost a step, and there's just no legit receivers. Rasheed Rice has done okay this year, but it's just not the same team. And then you get the Bills. And like I said already, they are a running team. When you have a running team, the clock runs, and uh, it's not just him slinging it all over the field anymore, which is great because I think that helps them to be more built to win in the playoffs in January when you have cold weather. And that was their biggest thing. They could just never run the ball until lately, and you've seen how huge that is. So you don't want to use Josh Allen's arm all day. Um, you know, it's strong. He's got a good arm. He makes crazy good plays. But if he's throwing it 40, 50 times a game, you're kind of in trouble because he's probably throwing a few picks, I would assume. So uh, Chiefs are the number one under team in the NFL. 13 of their 18 games have gone under. I never thought I'd say that beginning of the season. 13 of 18 have gone under, 72.2%. And the Bills have gone under in 11 of their 18 games. Two under teams. And that's just against the regular spread. And that's 45 and a half. I'm taking it all the way up to 51 and a half. So I just need them to stay under that. These teams played early this year, as I mentioned. And they played to a 20 to 17 game in better weather conditions. So now we got worse weather, uh, playoff type atmosphere. Two teams that now le like to lean on the run a little bit more. So give me the outline of under 51 and a half and James Cook over or 50 plus yards as my best bet in this game. Again, I like James Cook over 16 and a half on its own. I also like the under 45 and a half on its own if you just want to do that. But um, that's kind of the only bet I really like in this game. Um, at least as of right now, uh, you know, maybe you could deal one of the B Bills tight ends for another anytime touchdown bet. I think both of them caught one last game last week. I also kind of lean Stefan Diggs under, I think it's six and a half receptions now. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to do a decent job at taking him away a little bit. And uh, there's just other weapons you can throw to. Now they're more of a running team, things like that. So anyways, those are just some leans, but that's my best bet for the Chiefs and Bills game. We got a heck of a Sunday to watch for some football um i got my niece's 16th birthday party on that day but you know i'll i'll manage it i'll still watch some games obviously if i can so um anyways that's what we got i'm excited for this weekend we got a lot of fun sports going on but uh let's check out the bets recap mayfield the dreams over 255 and a half pass yards is bet number one we got sam laporta anytime touchdown for a half unit at plus 140 on fanduel 
And then we finish it with a little two-legger. James Cook, 50-plus rush yards and under 51.5 in the KC and Buffalo game, minus 110 on DraftKings. Uh, you know, it's kind of early. We're recording this Thursday night. It's coming out Friday. So, you know, if I have any added plays as more things come out, I will put those in the pinned comments. Same with the Saturday games. But uh, that's what we got. Hopefully we get some more winners and we have a great divisional round. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys' best bet is for the divisional round before we head to the NFC and AFC championship game. It's wild. So, anyways, thank you for all the support during this football season. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon.